So, uh, good day to you. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Kjartan Emelson, and uh, Atli is also going to uh, talk a little bit later. Um, so, um, what I do, uh, I actually, originally I was uh, lead game designer of EVE at the start, 2001, and uh, was uh, responsible, amongst other things, to uh, do the seeding of the universe and sort of create it. And uh, then I, I took a stint away, going to Shanghai for five years or so, and uh, came back to Iceland. I'm, I'm now handling the uh, sort of the MMO design of the dust. And uh, a lot of that development is actually happening here in Iceland because it integrates with tranquility. <coughs> and uh, some of the things that uh, I'm being faced with is to basically uh, go back a little bit to uh, how do we integrate dust into Eve, the, the fabric of Eve, so to speak. So uh, that is basically the subject of this uh, presentation. So uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my day job. Uh, we start with the universe. Uh, where we, I mean, there are all kinds of seeding decisions that you need to make when you're, you're <laughs> sorry? Uh, there are all kinds of seeding decisions you need to make when you uh, create a universe. Uh, one of the things first is to sort of get an approximate size of the systems you want to have. How many systems? How do you want to, to create regions and uh, the uh, sort of uh, what function is it supposed to have in terms of travel and uh, distances? And uh, then within the solar system, what's the level of detail we want to achieve? Uh, the resource distributions, the uh, security status landscape. Um, and then down to the planets, where we're basically now is sort of we're, we're sort of like bringing our focus to the planets. It had already been done, of course, with planetary interaction. But these are more what we need to do for the planets for the purpose of dust. And how does it show up in EVE? And uh, just for fun, actually, when I was writing this presentation, I thought that, that maybe for those of you that haven't been at a previous fanfest, uh, it might be uh, fun for you to look at some old stuff that I dug up. So uh, one of the questions originally that I had was, you know, how do we create this universe? And I mean, I know we have to have stars and solar systems and stuff like that, but, you know, how do you link them up and, uh, and why is that like that? So according to the storyline, they, they used to be like uh, the systems which were like closed off and then they discovered like faster than light travel and suddenly they could jump around their home systems and that was like the seed of the empires. So it sort of made sense to think of like the, the empires building up from, from a single point and sort of growing to the next system you could reach and from there you could reach other systems. And uh, <coughs> me being a chaos physicist and all, that remind me of something that I had seen in my studies, and I hope this works. This is like uh, aluminum dissolving into sulfate or something like that. I don't know, it's chemistry. But uh, it, it's basically, uh, it forms like an aluminum crystal. And um, the, the funny thing about this is that uh, the way you simulate this in, in physics uh, sort of reminded me of the purpose that we wanted for the EV universe, because there is a uh, type of algorithm or method or algorithm that is used to simulate this kind of crystal growth, uh, which is called diffusion limited aggregation. And uh, I'll explain it to you a little bit. The way it works is that you, you have an initial seed of, you can think of it as a, some kind of sticky ball. And, uh, and then you define a, a radius around the, that ball. And then you, you, you randomly put another ball and let it do a random walk within that sphere. And uh, if it goes out of the sphere, you just ignore it, you start with another one. But eventually it will hit up with another ball and stick to it. And as it grows like that, it sort of grows into a, a crystalline structure like this. And uh, and that's when I decided that this would be a cool way to create a universe. And uh, <coughs> here is actually the program, the tool used to create the universe. 
Can you all see this? Yeah. So basically, this is the empty void before anything happens. And uh, now let's start with Amar or something. I just took a point here. And it's <laughs> it starts growing. And I'll just pause it a little bit here. So you see that uh, here I also introduced some slight logic to, to actually fragment this into constellations. Uh, but then you, you can see how it grows there. And then I can stop it like that. And then maybe either another seed. And it will sort of grow into each other. I will pause it here and create another empire here. Like this. And then I'm going to have one squeezed here in between. And then you just let this grow. This is the number of uh, stars in the systems. And um, <coughs> actually the version uh, I used was a slightly more elaborate one because it, it actually did this in three dimension rather than two dimension. So uh, it could actually grow more into each other. And I think we used about 20 seed points. And we did a lot of trials and errors to see it and to nudge it. But this event eventually became the world of Eve. You can actually export it here? No, okay. This was, doesn't have the export function. I don't think we should change it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be very popular. And uh, why did this reset itself? Sorry about that. Uh, like this. So I'll. <coughs> And I, I thought it was also a good time to, to, uh, to admit some sins, or, uh, because I, I was digging into this very, very old file backup that I had, and uh, I found this file. This was actually for the, uh, for the uh, seeding of the asteroid belt. And there you can see some people had, didn't believe that claim, but if you look at this, <laughs> <laughs> this is the question. Answer to the life and universe and everything. It's all in the fabric of Eve. Everything, all the random generation was seeded with 42. <laughs> and now, that wasn't really a sin, but the next one is. Uh, I'm not sure if you will spot it. Does anyone spot it? So basically, it was funny. And in 2003, when Eve came out, we started hearing rumors on the forums, like, you know, where is this Archon or Or? Has somebody seen it anywhere? I mean, this must be very, very rare. And he said, we said, yeah, it's very rare. It's difficult to find it. I mean, you have to really go far and fetch it, to see it in the belts, or maybe it's all mined up. And. Uh, then the, the rumor got more and more persistent that it was really, really rare. And uh, that's when I found out that I made a spelling mistake. <laughs> so it actually didn't seed. So, uh, that was embarrassing, to say the least. But it's there now. So. But uh, this is part of things that needs to be done here. Like, uh, these are... Uh, uh, distribution factors that we, we were looking at uh, originally and also when we were doing this seeding of asteroid belts. It was this kind of problems that we have in seeding. It's like, you know, we, we, we use minerals at the, as the composition of items and then we, we sort of implied a certain scarcity of these minerals and then we had to reverse calculate that into ores and then we have to reverse calculate it in what kind of distribution of ores would in the end bring that scarcity profiles of the minerals, and then try to, to, to uh, sort of distribute it across the universe in a way that followed some security status kind of profiles. So, um, <coughs> but this is all, all old history. Um, so I'm going to go uh, back to uh, our planets. So uh, what the goal that we had for the planets here was to basically how do we strategize the, the planet terrain. Um, and uh, also, 
you might say that it's already, there is also a strategic element, element to the planet terrain through planetary interaction. But here we actually wanted to, to have you know, terrain and boundaries which you own. Not like in planetary interaction where it's basically single players, not corporations, and they can sort of be on top of each other. So it doesn't create like a, a sense of ownership of a piece of land. And uh, so uh, it's basically a question of, of creating those districts that we call on planets. And um, the, the, the districts are uh, really, uh, we decided, originally we had the thought of sort of tiling the whole planet with hexagons because they look cool. And we still use the hexagons here because they somehow, it, it must be hexagon in sci-fi. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we decided not to tile it because uh, if we wanted to tile it, we had the problems that if we had to have a reasonable amount of of districts on the planet, the districts would need to be huge, like continent size. And we didn't want that. So, uh, so we decided to, to uh, actually have just a, like a place, the, the districts on the planet themselves, with a radius which we haven't quite determined yet, but we probably want to have around 10 to 20 districts on a planet. <coughs> One of the things that we'd like to do uh, in EVE is to, uh, to make modifications in the, in the way the planet shaders work. Because already you have seen cities on planets. Uh, and what we want to do is to actually then make that coherent through the districts on the planet. So you would be able to visually look at the planet and see its districts by looking at those structures. Those are pretty clear in, uh, on the night time, but uh, we need to find a nice visual way to make it visible in the daylight as well. But that's going to be solved. And uh, it was very important for us to also like, give the impression that uh, the, uh, the planets are alive, because there are people there. So uh, the, uh, if there's a, a dust battle going on in that district, you should be able to see some kind of flashes and explosion so that you know if you're just flying by you're not participating in any of this you're just flying by and you look at this planet and you see like ooh, there's a lot of things happening there and it's actual people that are doing stuff there and uh, and war barges also shown somehow like this uh, there there's a lot of questions about the war barges obviously because they are kind of supposed to be a ship and that means that it should really be in Eve uh, and it probably will be but at this point, we don't want to, to, uh, to bring that complexity into, game, uh, into play. Uh, we want to be able to control a little bit the user experience within Dust, and having an EVE player destroy your war barge <laughs> is going to be very disrupting, especially once you can't fly yourself. So going back to the districts, uh, you can... Uh, the idea there is that they, are, they can be owned by corporations. And uh, the function of a district is going to be determined by uh, what we call a surface infrastructure, which you should think of as something substantial. It's not like a, a little house. It's basically because the districts are like large, it's like 200 kilometers. And the idea is that there is an urban center there, even though you're not, we're not playing into that. That will be yet another game. But uh, the... Uh, there are cities and people there, and the, uh, there is like a function to the districts, which for me they might be like you know some kind of re refinement or uh, uh, production facilities, research centers, etc. And uh, so assigning a surface infrastructure to the district is, is part of the gameplay, and that that is part of the uh, sort of sandbox gameplay of Dust, where you as a corporation would actually go on a planet, you claim a district, or you fight for it and you sort of improve your district by deploying a surface infrastructure on it. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, there is a, a question about uh, how do we seed uh, the, uh, the districts on the planet. Uh, there is a small uh, problem, or not a problem, but you know, we have to face certain realities, uh, which are basically restrictions that we have because of uh, memory and, and such memory footprint on the PlayStation. So uh, we decided to only go for temperate planets for now because we can't really have you know, 
environments for gas planets or something like that, which would be strange floating districts or something like that. So uh, we, we sort of uh, decided to, uh, to, to uh, limit ourselves to temperate planets. And uh, <clears throat> we also have a, a, a distribution, uh, uh, we need seed a distribution that will depend on the security status. And uh, it, for example, in HiSec, we will seed uh, the districts with uh, NPC owners. And uh, the HiSec districts will essentially be fought over by dust mercenaries through a, like, a quick match-made games. So, so these are the, the, the sort of game modes which you would be accustomed to in terms of a, a normal FPS. You just go into a game and you get match-made. And these, these battles actually happen on a district in HiSec. You will be able to see it from, from EVE, but it's not, you know, it doesn't have a meaningful impact on it. It's pure, pure NPC stuff. Um, then we have the, uh, the uh, factional warfare space where we will have, uh, again, NPC, but there it is uh, uh, slightly more integrated because it integrates into the factional warfare mechanism. And, uh, and then the, the idea is that below that, low second and null sec is going to be all unclaimed districts up for grabs. But we're, we're sort of like, all of our approach with Dust is really, we, we start uh, with the FPS and we start with the NPC aspect of it. And, uh, and then we see, like, you know, depending on your reactions and, and, and how it all goes, then we, we gradually want to move towards the sandbox gameplay. So, um, <coughs> again, coming back to, a, uh, to uh, some of the, uh, the uh, problems we have uh, with the environments, to create all these environments for these, I think there are about 7,000 temperate planets, Eve. Um, <coughs> We have to, to find ways of creating a variety without actually having to design 7,000 de environments, which are very expensive to do. It's much more expensive than designing sp empty space like we have in EVE. So uh, uh, we needed to find some clever ways to, to do that. Uh, another thing that we also need to uh, interact with is basically the, the current planet shaders. They sort of define the, the, the land mass and, and sea levels of the planets. Uh, and, and these are actually some kind of terrain. You can't really see the elevation from, from far, but we cannot, we, we cannot uh, replicate those terrains everywhere uh, on, the, on the PlayStation. So uh, one of the things we need to do is to uh, select good spots on the planet, and we have some algorithm to do that, to, to like automatically find some interesting district locations. And then <coughs> we need to sort of interpret the, uh, the planetary... Uh, Parameters like, uh, uh, for example, is the district close to the north or south, or is it close to the equator? Is it close to sea? And uh, so you have all kinds of, of uh, like uh, environmental uh, information that should then guide uh, the, the 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 our system that I will describe here, which we called Galaxy, to actually choose the right combination of available content to sort of create a, a variety. So uh, at the base level that we have our height maps. Uh, this is kind of the, the most elementary part, and one of the reasons why we couldn't really use, because like if you take the, uh, the terrain on the, the planets, they are kind of uh, procedural, <laughs> or they are kind of mixtures of, uh, of uh, different landscapes, so you have actually quite a, a random factor in it, uh, but that is kind of difficult to do uh, from a level design point of view in an FPS. You cannot just use an arbitrary terrain because it wouldn't make sense from a battle point of view. So the, the terrains are usually chosen in such a way that they sort of uh, uh, make sense from, uh, from an FPS point of view. So uh, they need to be handcrafted, or at least to a very large amount. Uh, but they are pretty big. I think the, the terrains are five times five kilometers, is that? Yes. Yeah. They use some mega-terrain uh, texture system, so it's, it's really large terrains. Um, so you would usually uh, select a, uh, a height map to a district. Uh, and then, for a given height map, uh, the level designers actually define uh, slots for structures. And uh, it comes in, uh, in basically three sizes. And this is unique for a given height map. And you have, like, uh, you have the placement of, of these slots. These are empty slots and, and uh, basically come in, in these three sizes. 
And so the big ones, which are called outposts, these are the, the real, like, uh, you know, uh, epic structure of a district. They define the structure. And, uh, <clears throat> and then they have some side, side structures, which are like this network of medium and then up to the small details of the terrain. So uh, <clears throat> uh, these can be plugged into any kind of, uh, uh, for any given outpost can be put in any big slot. So you could have like multiple terrains and you could choose to put the outpost on this there. And uh, <clears throat> another thing that we have is uh, what we call environment packages. Now these are basically collections of textures that define a certain, like, a uh, uh, certain of probably, yeah, define the environment to a level, for example, if it's lush and green, or is it desertic, or is it snow, etc. So, uh, uh, so here we have the variability of the height map, we have the slot system, and then we can sort of uh, s switch to the environment. So this would, for example, depend on what kind of planet it is, or where the districts are located, etc. And then on top of that, we have uh, what we call moods. So uh, these could be all the way from like light placement, where the sun is, is it low on the horizon, creating long shadows, or is it high? The sky box, is it a lot of clouds, electrical storms kind of thing, or is it very sunny and, and, and blue skies? And uh, these affect a lot the, your perception of the, the same environment. And uh, then for a given surface infrastructure that you, like I said before, you apply a surface infrastructure to a, uh, uh, to a district, then there is an authoring that says that, uh, okay, this kind of, like, for example, a production facility, we will put uh, out the outpost number 57, which is a graphic asset that we have, put that in a socket zero, whatever socket zero is on this height map. It might be different depending on the different height maps, so it will not be at the same spots but you, you're sort of like pouring the surface infrastructure on the height map and it will adjust to whatever socket layout there is there. And uh, so even though you have the same function, they would adapt to the different, different terrain and then you have the different environments, etc. So this is sort of the big ugly picture of it. And uh, uh, this gives us a certain level, like I said, of diversity. And of course we would like to be able to have like unique terrain for every single planet, but I mean, it's not at least realistic to do that now. So uh, this is the, the path we're going to use. And then uh, eventually as both, if we add more content, then we can add more diversity to the districts. And uh, if we evolve our rendering technology, adding some procedural stuff, etc., this might get more realistic and more like unique everywhere. Um, yes, uh, then uh, the, I'm sort of like stepping back out of that, uh, but uh, uh, Atli is going to probably uh, go a little bit more in the terrain, so maybe this would be the right time to <coughs> oh. do that. Or what show you some, some stuff. Let's see if I, what I can show. I'm going to show you guys screenshots. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I'm not going to take too long. I want to show you guys a glimpse, or give you guys a glimpse into what we are developing today in Shanghai and how it differs from what you're playing in the other room. Um, but it shows off the environment types that Kerten is talking about. And one of our level artists, he put this together for you guys. Um, Where's my terrain? For you guys uh, to see, to get a, a sneak peek. So, here we have one of the new terrains. And this is obviously some deserted, you know, landscape. This is at a scale that is far bigger than uh, the FanFest build that we have in the other room. Uh, this is a full five kilo kilometer map. It doesn't have all of the details, the terrain sockets or the small sockets that <laughs> Kjartan was talking about inserted in it. But you can imagine how <clears throat> there's a socket here at the left, and we can mess that terrain up, create unique gameplay there. Um, 
using the, the stenciling. And one thing about our, our terrain engine, and this is a, you know, I'm not very good at talking about the geeky stuff, but I'll try. Um, we use occlusion map maps for the height map itself, mega texture, um, which uh, I think Carmack had in his engine. And that allows us to stream in data based on distance to the player. What that gives us is resolution constant, but size independent terrains. So even if we've chosen five kilometer terrains, we could easily go to 50. It's probably not very fun. <laughs> it's, very, it's very big being in a scout trying to run. Um, I guess we would sell more vehicles, but <laughs> but anyway. So uh, on the PlayStation, this is this is you know coming. The, the PlayStation is very powerful, but it is a console. Just like other consoles, it has certain limitations. So we have to use it properly. We have to use the cell CPU, very powerful, but we have to like invent new ways of of rendering things. The good thing is that you know that obviously putting that much focus into it instead of doing run of the mill type stuff allows us to achieve bigger things, to render more things on the screen at the same time. But anyways, let's uh, go through this a little bit. Now I want to show you guys what happens when we put a new uh, environment type. Same terrain, looks completely different. And this is, you know, yeah. <laughs> the very similitude of it, looking at a planet and you see something that looks desert colored or, you know, brown or whatever, and then you go down there and it looks lush and green and, you know, stuff like that is kind of stupid. Like, we don't want you guys to feel, you know, kind of, you know, the lack of realism in it. So it's very important for us that even if it's not changing gameplay that much, it just simply looks more real. So yeah, this is a one step closer to photorealism in our game, and we're pretty proud of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wanted to mention this, uh, though it wasn't really my purpose to go into, you know, this gameplay part of it, but uh, it's part of the the uh, the way we we uh, seed things. And here's uh, an example from that we're envisioning for a fashion of warfare, where you basically have a district preceded on the planet with a uh, what we call a surface command center as a surface infrastructure deployed on it. And the surface command centers are like kind of unique. Uh, surface infrastructure in the sense that you can only have one district having that kind of structure on a planet and so it sort of defines your control of that planet so it's pretty important and uh, the idea is that you then have a, a, a sort of matching structure out in space uh, could be customs office but we usually refer to it as orbital common centers to sort of make it sound similar and uh, <clears throat> they sort of uh, have a, like a, 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 like a, when you have these alliances, like basically the owner of the districts on the surface and the owner of the orbital structure, when they are chums, however that is defined, uh, we call it, that would be some kind of treaty between them, uh, then they, they sort of help, they, they live in symbiosis with each other. So in this case, for example, and this is an example of this, different maps that we have with the different sockets is that the, the uh, and that's also something that maybe I didn't quite mention well enough but uh, with the uh, these height maps that we have we can also define like a, we call it, like, call it hub and spoke so the hub is really where the outpost is that's the main map but then you can have like auxiliary maps which are sort of supporting functions to the, the district. And in this case, we have an uh, auxiliary map, which is an orbital artillery installment. And what it does, actually, is providing defense to the orbital structure. So uh, if there's any enemies that are going to try to take over that orbital structures, they get fired upon. This you can imagine as a turret, except it's on a surface. And uh, so in this case, the, the way that you would actually uh, uh, silence that gun would either to go, uh, or you would always try to go with the infantry and, and try to, to silence it, but 
orbital bombardment could also switch it off. So that creates sort of a, a nice interplay together of the surface and the, the <coughs> orbit. This is still all NPC, uh, uh, of course, uh, seeded. But this is sort of the way we were envisioning that <coughs> take it forward towards, uh, uh, towards uh, sandbox gameplay. And, uh, and also note that contribute to sovereignty in this case, it is in the meaning of the factional warfare sovereignty. It's not, not the, uh, not the NELSEC sovereignty. So yeah, I think it's uh, probably time for questions. If we have, yes. and there was somebody who suggested that if you have questions, it's probably better to go in line to this microphone because otherwise people will have problems. <laughs> So, uh, let's it on. Hello. Yep. So, based on what, what I've seen here, is that implying that in terms of like the planetary interaction that the EU players are doing, that that has no impact on the maps and what's going on? And uh, no, like I said, the uh, our goal with uh, with introducing the uh, the dust sort of reality into the EU universe is is pretty careful. So uh, we didn't want to mess up with the economical balance in EVE too much at that point. Uh, but I personally think it's very straightforward to actually imagine that you would have some kind of integration with that at some point. But, but what path to take there is going to come with you know, discussions with, the, with you guys and see how, how it makes sense. But I think first we need to first get it into tranquility, get it to work, get people familiar with it. And then people, I think, will see, oh, it would make sense to do this like this. So for example, uh, one, of, one, of, one idea, and I, I'm just saying this just as a completely stupid idea, but you could like, if um, you might want to say that if you as a planetary interaction uh, guy would move your command center within a district boundary, you might get a bonus for that fact. And, and that way you would be sort of grouping all these various command centers which are now scattered randomly around the planet to within a, some kind of administrative domain and make some interaction between the people. Okay. But the structures themselves and everything currently, well, probably at launch will have nothing to do. You could have no, multiple no. VI. Okay. But it, I mean, it's obviously it should be, but. <laughs> um, my question is actually about the uh, meshes that you're going to use for the buildings. Are they going to be generic or are they going to be factional and set up by region? Factional. Factional? Yeah. So we have to fill in that over time. It takes a long time to create you know, the same thing, but in four variants. So in the beginning, you will have something like uh, we're playing now, the biomass outpost. It's an industrial reprocessing, one of the SIs, or thematic to the SI that you've chosen. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, that's Kaldari today. And when we release, uh, we probably won't have all four variants. But over time, we will just have to fill in the fractals. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, you've talked a lot about uh, installing these in high sec, low sec, zero, zero. What about wormhole space? Is there any plans for putting dust in wormhole? Yes, but we're not going to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, before I ask my question, I've got to get a couple of shout outs to the guys that are probably going to see this in a couple of hours when it actually goes live on Eve TV. The guys on IRC, the guys on the forums, and the guys on Twitter for dust. Love you guys. This is your shout out. Ash, stop bugging me about it. Anyway, on to the actual question. You mentioned that temperate planets are going to be the only ones available at launch. Now, I can safely assume that you will be working towards bringing the other ones into the game, but do you have any sort of cool game ideas or variations on gameplay with these other planets? Like, for instance, oceanic planets, if you read the description of all the structures, they're on the ocean floor. So yeah. is it, we going to see some kind of mini submarine warfare in dust? <laughs> <laughs> That would be cool. I mean, that's a good idea. Yeah, and we, we could actually yeah. just make it the spaces in, in Eve and call them submarines because yeah, yeah. they or kind of like move in a sea. Okay. <laughs> well, guess what? Have, have you got any? That's my idea. What are your ideas? <laughs> have oh, you got any? I think we all want to play in Cloud City. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. We have a lot of ideas, and we've done you know prototypes and tried things out and and the different moods and and environment sets and stuff like that to like see if we could achieve something realistic with lava planets or plasma planets and stuff like that. But we're very, very much focused on solving the, the core gameplay. 
Yep. Right. I'm just wondering, is you, you mentioned temper planets. What about barren planets? Are they going to be, due to the probably kind of similarity to at least desert regions and temper mm -hmm. planets, are they going to be very quickly brought out as well? Or they're is there a bit more? Or yeah, is there a bit more? Will, they would be easier, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah they're say, temperate. So, yeah, because are we going to actually possibly even see them for launch if you guys get some lucky stars no. going? No? no? No. All right. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> hey, you have 7,000. <laughs> <laughs> The, the environment textures that you were talking about um, that you overlay on the terrain, will they be changing with the seasons according to proper orbital mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's possible. <laughs> it's just authoring the content for it. That's time consuming. That's cool. Interestingly, if mine is kind of piggybacking off of that, my question is, since we're going to introduce uh, temperate planets first, is there any talk of adding like uh, extreme weather conditions in gameplay, like torrential rainfall or heavy snow? So as tanks may be, be able to get through snow pretty good, but a, scout, a small scout uh, car would have trouble, you know, gaining traction in snow. Yeah, we want to do that, but it's probably something that we have to do a little bit later. So it's not core gameplay, so it's like an added thing, expansion. <laughs> soon. No. Soon, yeah. <laughs> TM, <laughs> not the other soon. Are you going to implement uh, with the size of the planets with gravity, jump length, and things like that? Hmm. Stamina with different atmospheres and, and things like that. Like if you are in a small planet with lesser gravity, then you can jump further and things like that. Move the vehicles faster if, uh, if the atmosphere is thinner. We will definitely get there. But I mean, like we... Just to make it very clear, we are going for a fairly standardized when it comes to gravity and, and like atmospheric conditions and stuff like that to begin with. And it's more about creating a system that allows us to pile on these in ingredients and, and you know, populating or seating the universe mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all of these parameters. Mm -hmm. But then once we have the core gameplay, all of these yeah. elements and so on, we will get there. Like we uh, will. Uh, I think the generic answer to this kind of questions is that you know, as much as you are, we are fired up about yeah. being able to do everything. And that's kind of the idea with Eve has been from the start. It's like, you know, uh, we sometimes use that analogy with Eve that we're like, it's like building a fractal. You know, you, you start with the large structures and then you go into and refine the, the details. So, so yes, we want to do all this, but you know, now, right now we're so focused on just getting this, you know, running. That's uh, our first focus. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, just the first thing is you're being careful with it, and we really appreciate that. You've got a lot of ideas. You're busting at the seams. Um, we like that. I really like that you guys are being careful about it. Um, I just had a, a question, a clarification. The players get to choose what they plug into those spots? Yes. And so maybe I choose a layout, and then I apply it to a map, and then I apply it to another map. Another oh, map. Oh, oh, so you mean into the individual sockets that are around... Uh, you know, I, I choose what my large, medium, and small is, and the map chooses. No, 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 no. You will be able to influence, obviously, you know, what surface infrastructure. Yeah. You but currently, it's just this is like a quality yeah. of the surface infrastructure. Infrastructure, what structures goes into the sockets. Yeah. So, but uh, but I think on the battlefield you have the installations, right? Which yes. are which are kind of structures, but they are more like uh, within a match. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not persistent structures, but you can deploy them, and they are big. Like they are, they will shape the gameplay and you know For extract resources match. even to work. Yeah, and you know. they stay there until someone busts it up and replaces it. Well, they, they don't persist there, um, not now, <laughs> but you know that idea has been suggested that maybe Capture we could just have destroy. A, you know. Yeah, but the, I mean the goal is to blow it up. <laughs> For the other one. Thanks. Uh, you made mention of seeding temperate plants. How is that going to affect um, systems that don't have temperate uh, plants currently in the uh, system? Uh, I think that's okay. I mean, they, uh, there are even systems which are lots of temperate plants, actually. We found some systems which are four or five. It's kind of surprising, actually. And, um, Was it a spelling mistake? Mm. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's... Uh, I think it's okay to have this kind of variety where, you know, sometimes for some fluke reasons you don't have anything. So we just make sure that the game design is not relying on that to be there to the point where, you know, well, it's not there, so we can't do this, for example. So would that mean eventually, maybe down the line, expansion or such, you guys might add the additional plans to add maybe some 
some warfare in some yeah. other areas? I, nope. think, I think there are a lot of EVE players that wouldn't like the idea of adding planets just like that. I don't know. Well, no, I'm not talking like adding planets, but other oh, types yeah. of planets. Oh, oh. Yeah. Like uh, barren planets, for example. Correct. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we Sorry, will yeah, absolutely yeah. add absolutely, more. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, coming to orbital bombardment, um, they seem very impressive, but is there going to be any sort of lingering damage for those? Could you say you wanted to just burn the Earth? Could you uh, just glass a district to nothing, and then it would, be, it would take a lot of resources, perhaps, to rebuild it? Something would you guys like, like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're going to work with you guys on defining all of this. Burn the Earth, right? Scorch the Earth, yeah. But, 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 then you, but then you have to accept the fact that the <laughs> orbital artillery that is going to shoot at your Titan might be very powerful. Yeah, we can't only give you big guns. <laughs> yes, that would, be, that would be completely acceptable. Also, um, with orbital bombardment, so far we've only seen them with dreadnoughts. Um, or I guess it was... Yeah. Well, you, well if you're the referring, the, the, yeah, the trailer, that yes, was a bigger yes. one. Right, and so that would have had a much more devastating impact. Um, are there plans to do um, fighters and fighter bomber strikes like they hinted at in the trailer? Or is that still very far off or not being considered at Well, basically, we, we see it as a curve of, you know, coolness factor going from cool to, to awesome. And you know, like we're somewhere right now. We're just looking at the middle part, mm -hmm. and because we we don't want the gameplay now to be such that you just wipe out the district, and uh, at the same times we still want the people that are doing it to be somewhat involved. But we're definitely trying to look from the game design point of view. We're looking at the whole you know spectrum, and if you're interested, I think there is a uh, I'm participating in a roundtable tonight around yep. orbital warfare. Yep. And I guess I don't want to hold too, up too much, but I guess my idea for the, uh, I was thinking like fighters could be used for very strategic strikes against perhaps vehicles and mm -hmm. such. Those uh, battleship artillery strikes were good against local mm -hmm. groups of, you know, soldiers, but then like dreadnought or above, yep. those, those would like just, I guess, eliminate entire s swaths of territory, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. okay. so and kill everyone in them, <laughs> including your team. Yes, including your team. <laughs> Now, with some of the planets in the EVE, I'm sure you may have heard this from people before, but some of the planets have very interesting stats given in-game when you go show info, such as lava planets that are frozen solid or temperate planets that have virtually no gravity. Are you going to fix up these numbers with dust? Mm -hmm. Or are you uh, just going to make it that eventually when you do add those factors in, like gravity, that it's going to be you jump and you just fly into space? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. Like, you know, I've been reading up on some weird planets or moons recently. Like, you know, I, there, there, there are some moons which, are, which have volcanic been. activity out of water or something like that. I'm not talking yeah. about the real, in yeah. reality. And so, you know, you could sort of, I think, justify some of these oddballs from... Yeah, but frozen lava uh, planets? Yeah, because what kind of lava is it? Is How it methane lava or...? All right, all right, I'll give you that one. But so, <laughs> if there are instances, though, where we find things like that, yeah. would you change them or would you just leave them as is? Uh, at least it's not on our you know, current roadmap to, to change that, but um, you know, if, if, if we see that there is an obvious mismatch, especially in the way that you see them, for example, and then I guess we would do it. But yeah. Thank you. It's, listen, it's not on our plan right now. But Captain has the power mm. to change it. So um, there's been a lot of talk about the different planets and following up with different planet types and stuff like that, but... Um, <laughs> Is there any thought to um, co expanding dust uh, combat into places that perhaps aren't on planets, like stations or ships? Or you have a lot of that, ideas. I mean, I'm sure you thought you've thought about it, but is that like, would you rather go there sooner than more planets, or you know, it's, it's just going to be a planet? Would you like Would you like your ship to be boarded by dust mercenaries? If I can hire some to fight back, then I think so. No. <sighs> I think this is something definitely that needs to come from you guys, yeah. if you want that, because this is definitely something that is very easy to, to Im imagine doing. There's nothing that stops us doing it. The tech and, and you know, the mm -hmm. databases and everything allow us to do all of that. But. Uh, can you do orbital bombardment in high sec as well? No. So just low sec and no sec? Factional warfare to start with. Uh, 
There's no orbital bombardment in high sec current. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to orbital bombardment, uh, when we saw the, uh, the demo, the Abaddon and the, uh, the other battleship, the Mel Maelstrom, they warped into the same spot. Now the planets rotate. These battles might be on the far side of the moon. Are we going to have to, are we going to like, will the mercenaries give us a bookmark to find where their target is, or are we going to have to travel around the dark side of the planet to find these battles? Actually, this is a very good question, yeah. uh, which I won't answer, okay. because, uh, <laughs> and it is truly a very good question, because we, we've, uh, we're, we're like looking at this, and it, it is a problem, and we're trying to find some like elegant way to solve it. And uh, we might not be able to, to, to uh, solve it completely to the point where it's acceptable, or like from a realistic point of view. Because it, it looked like the Abaddon was stationary. He, he's yeah, got yeah, to be stationary yeah, yeah. for the, the strike. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's got to get himself mm -hmm. in position. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how are you going to deliver that position as the planets are rotating? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Be? You know, in, in the perfect world, we should have, <coughs> we, we should really have orbiting structures. Like, you know, a station stay, in orbit around a planet should really rotate around a planet. Yeah, yeah. And, and currently, yeah. our uh, destiny, our, our physics engine, doesn't support that. You know, uh, and uh, changing that is a substantial work, and it's sort of a core system of, the, of EVE, and you don't want to mess with destiny too much. And uh, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to find solutions, but without going to the point of sur doing surgical open-heart surgery on destiny. So maybe when these orbital strikes come in, it's going to be, the battle's going to be there when you... Can you when, speak in, sorry, in the mic? When a, when a battle takes place is where you warp into the planet, say it's zero or 100 kilometers, is when there's a battle taking place on the planet and you're warping to do the orbital strike, will, will it be like a set piece? Because like I say, if the planet's rotating and the battle's over there and you warp in from one direction, you'd always end up in the same place at the planet. No, so no we, we don't how anticipate that. But, but maybe uh, because we're running out of time, there's a, uh, but there is an orbital warfare road. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, round table. Round table. So, okay. So uh, thank you all. <laughs>